Okay, let's carry on and check your work here. For the first one, we have, or sorry, second one, we have 8 to the power of 3. So 8 times 8 times 8. And I can rewrite out this division as a fraction. 8 times 8. Now, when I want to simplify a fraction, I know that if I have a common factor in the numerator and denominator, that they will simplify. 8 divided by 8 is equivalent to 1. So I can rewrite that with a 1, and same with the other pair here. And I have 1 times 1 times 8, which is just 8 to the power of 1. And you can see how these are equivalent. For the variable base, same idea. x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 3. And we know that x divided by x, x divided by x, and x divided by x, each of these is just equal to 1, so we can simplify those, and we're left with x squared. So the quotient of powers law says that if we have a power, say a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, what do you think we would do with these here? Well, let's check back at the exponents. 5 and 3 gave us 2. 3, 2, and 1. So we can see that if we have 5 x's in the numerator here, and we simplify 1x in the numerator and the denominator, we're subtracting one of each of these x's for every one that we have in the denominator. Or we can say that we are subtracting 5 minus 3 to get 2. And same thing over here, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. So if we have the same base and we are dividing, then we can subtract the exponents, m minus n. Those are two really important fundamental exponent laws that you're going to need to use throughout this unit. Next up, we have the power of a product. So Product means multiplication, so you can see that here 8 times 7 is a product. They're multiplying together, and we've raised it to the power of 3. So this is called a power of a product. And if I was to expand this, I have 8 times 7, 3 times. Oops. And since how all of the operations here are multiplication, I can rearrange the order a little bit, and I can put all of the 8s together, and all of the 7s together. And then now I can see that I can rewrite 8 times 8 times 8 as 8 cubed, and the same thing for the 7s, 7 cubed. And now using repeated multiplication, I've proved proven that the original equation is true. Same thing with the variable base. We have x times y, so the product of x and y is being raised to a power of 4, and we can demonstrate this by just writing this out with repeated multiplication. And then we can rearrange this so that we have all the x's together and all the y's together. And we can see that we have x to the power of 4 times y to the power of 4. Perfect. So product of a pro, pro, sorry, power of a product law says that we, if we have the product of two values, say a times b, being raised to the power of m, that we need to raise each of the factors a and b to the power of m. So this is a to the power of m times b to the power of m. Please be careful that this is not true if this is addition or subtraction in between a and b. Next one, we have the power of a quotient. Quotient is division. So we have 8 divided by 7, all being raised to the power of 3. If we write that out by expanding it, we get 8 over 7 times 8 over 7 times 8 over 7. And we know that when we're multiplying fractions, we multiply the numerators together. So 8 times 8 times 8 is 8 cubed. And 7 times 7 times 7 is 7 cubed by multiplying 
multiplying the denominators. Same thing with the variables, x over y times x over y, luckily this one's only squared, won't take us as long. Multiply the numerators, x times x is x squared, and multiply the denominators, y times y is y squared. And you can compare those and notice that they are equivalent. So power of a quotient, so when there's division or fraction and we're raising it to a power, we would have something like a over b to the power of m, and we could rewrite this as a to the power of m over b to the power of m. This may come handy in a variety of situations when you're simplifying. You may want to simplify the fraction first and then raise it to the power of m, or you may want to rewrite it like this and simplify each of the powers first. Same as above, these laws, of course, go in both directions. So if you have a to the power of m times b to the power of m, you could rewrite this as a times b all to the power of m. And last but not least, we have the power of a power. So we have this power, a to the power of 3, being raised to the power of 2. So if we expand that, we have 8 cubed times itself. And if we expand that, we have 8 times 8 times 8. times itself, and we can see that we now have 6 8s being multiplied together, so we have 8 to the power of 6. So take a look at the exponents here and see what operation you would use to get 6 between 3 and 2. Check to see if it's the same operation for the variable. Here we have x squared to the power of 4, so we have oops, 4 x squareds. You could probably predict what this is going to come out to, but if we expand it, good, we end up with x to the power of 8. Power of a power law goes something like a to the power of m, so you have some power being raised to the power. And I should use a different letter here, so let's go with n. And when we do that, if we look back, we can see that the operation that's happening between the exponents is multiplication. 3 times 2 gives us 6. The base stays the same. The exponents are multiplied. And same here, 2 times 4 is 8. So here we'll have a to the power of m times n. So now using your exponent laws, you can work through questions 24, 25, and 26 and see how you do. We'll check them on the next video.